There we go. Zoom. <laughs> oh, welcome. Hi. March will catch up later. Uh, just waiting on a few people. I know we're uh, we're just up on. Well, we still got two minutes until kickoff anyway, and a bunch of conductors are in our all hands meeting. So that's like a thing that goes on on Thursdays. So it always makes a slow roll of people into. Oh, no problem. We record it anyway, so that's wonderful. What most people end up watching on the recordings. So, um, but we have our friends that I love seeing here. Two of which you can see on the screen. Never hey find merch and Michael. Uh, and Pat should be on in a second. I'm going to text him if his kids aren't driving him crazy yet. How are you now? <laughs> I'm I'm handling things good. <laughs> good. Good. We'll get into it in a minute. Sorry. Let me just uh no problem. No, no sure rush. I get back to Pat here. There we go. Well, I'll say something while you're waiting. Just from these, you know, a couple of weeks, I feel like I've never met Merch and like I've been hanging out with him on the video for the last couple of weeks. And like, you know. We need to get together for a beer after this. Yeah, <laughs> you guys need to use the the LinkedIn the LinkedIn group. Merch is using it. Both of you guys are kind of using it, but uh, it's crazy. We've been uh, uh, we probably should host a happy hour like <laughs> yeah. for, the, for the group who's like the our our regulars, right? The regulars happy hour kind of uh, get you guys all a members only jacket or something. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I can just to be able to see humans. <laughs> I, I survived the coronavirus, and all I got was this lousy jacket. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Hey, hey yeah. Pat. How Just... Stefan helped us survive? Yeah, I don't know, but we haven't gotten through it yet. Don't, don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't give us more credit than we deserve, Michael. Uh, so uh, if I if I look extra red, I don't know. You tell me. I uh, I just got that that light for C three Pat and I oh is it is it making is that why you have like such like a sheen on you all yeah well I mean I could change the see I could do that and I can do oh, okay. the, I can do the intensity and I can do the warmth mm -hmm. but I don't know I think it just makes me look pinker I haven't <laughs> opened mine yet it's still it's still sitting in the box I played around with the little microphone that was sent to me. Yeah, we're doing it just so everyone knows we're doing a virtual as we have this conversation. Yeah, you know, well, and you know what? Let, let's let's do this. Let's uh, uh, hey, Brooke, how are you? Hi, Brian, uh, how are you? Hi, Brooke, how are you? I figured I we to see you. <laughs> you too. I was hoping you guys were going to make it to C3, and then of course, that's that's not happening, so yeah. this is second best. Yeah, unfortunate. <laughs> is Ricardo joining? Um, no, he's on vacation this week. Oh, okay. Well, vacation is important. Yeah. <laughs> I, I told him he could probably just take vacation and no one would really know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he's so good, though. Like, he's like, you know, the kind that would definitely yes. make sure he's not like beating you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. I also, I also have a few questions about how you take vacation. Like, now it just means you're not at your computer <laughs> yeah. essentially what you're saying right like yeah. it's all you're saying is like you'll be in front of a computer you just won't do it for work because <laughs> it's the only way you could see anybody else <laughs> the irony is when we all go back to well i hate using the, the word normal but when things go back to any semblance of normal then people are going to be like okay now now i need a vacation after after months and months of this <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Or all the vacations that got canceled, like you need to use your airline flight. Yeah, yeah they gave us a year. So yeah. I don't know if the year is going to be any good, but we'll, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Cool. What do we say we kick this off? Sure. So, uh, hey, guys, thanks so much for joining us for another episode of Search From Home. I'm Stefan Bajayo, one of your hosts. Uh, Patrick Reinhardt is here on my screen. Nero is over here. Always, <laughs> always. You're always to my always. Life. You <laughs> move around like you're the. This is an odd Brady bunch, and you keep taking a different child's role. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jan. <today. laughs> Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Well, we have Ryan Hip with us from Amway, uh, an amazing digital marketer and SEO whose title spans both. Um, digital reputation management as well as search. So mm -hmm. there's this really interesting cross function there. We've done some awesome work with Ryan 
And we're really excited to have you on the show today because I think you bring a unique perspective. So thanks for joining us. Yeah, uh, very honored to be here. Thanks for, for reaching out. Um, I'm very flattered the, to be on the, on the show today. And um, I hope this is a value add for, for your listeners. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I, I know it will be. So uh, let's, let's kick off. First and foremost, how are you? Uh, well, let, let's, let's give a background on you. Give a little bit of background yeah. on, on, oh, okay. on, on who you are, what you've done, Ryan, so people get a sense of who you are. And then let's talk about how you're living in the COVID world. Sure, sure. Uh, so uh, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Ryan Hip. Uh, I am the global lead for SEO, uh, for enterprise SEO at the Amway Corporation, global global corporation. Uh, we are the number one direct selling uh, company in the world. We specialize in uh, products that range uh, health and wellness, beauty, uh, home care goods, uh, the, the whole gamut, uh, cooking. Uh, we, uh, I've been with, uh, with the company about seven years. Uh, my first role was in, uh, the, in global digital. And uh, that's when we founded our uh, online reputation program. And SEO was like the number one vehicle that we were uh, using to, to assist with our online reputation. The direct selling industry at large has varying levels of uh, trust and mistrust with general populace in different pockets of the globe. Uh, so what we try to accomplish is uh, dispel myths about direct selling and, and uh, the value that our, our, our company can, can have in the world. Uh, since uh, my tenure at, at Amway, I've transitioned to, from digital into uh, corporate marketing. So my, my role is, has expanded and uh, beyond just the reputation, but uh, really helping bring discovery and brand and product awareness uh, that's another problem with uh, most direct selling companies is uh, they we often rely on our distributors to be the uh, marketing and advertising legs of our company. But uh, in this day and age, in a digital world, uh, we have to, if we want our brand to be as prevalent as other Fortune 500 companies, uh, which we are one of the Fortune, Forbes Fortune 500 companies, we, we need to, to really be a proactive and, and building credibility and discovery for our brands and products. Before my time at Amway, kind of rewinding, uh, I worked for another big West Michigan company, uh, Steelcase, one of the largest furniture, uh, uh, business furniture manufacturers in the world. And uh, similarly, that's really where I got my start with SEO. It was a, 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 there was a vacuum at, at Steelcase. No one was doing SEO or thinking of SEO. Similar reasons, uh, Steelcase uh, doesn't normally sell their furniture to the direct market. Uh, if you want your uh, office outfitted with Steelcase furniture, you often go through a, uh, a distributor that uh, outfits businesses with, with uh, like it's a, a middleman that, that they'll come in and measure and, and set you up. But Steelcase is the, the furniture provider for these, these distributors. So similar, we, we never had uh, really focused on direct sales or getting the public at large knowing what the Steelcase brand was. So seeing this, this uh, marketing uh, kind of vacuum, I proposed that the company start thinking of, of doing SEO. And we, applied that to the Steelcase store, which was their first foray into selling directly to consumers who might want like a, a chair for their home office or a desk. And, you know, those distributors are not necessarily going to work with these little piddly, you know, one-on-one -on -one home office situations. Most of their clients are big, big companies. So that gave the direct public an opportunity to buy, to buy Steelcase furniture. So that's really how I, I my passion for, for um, really the psychology behind purchasing translated into uh, this SEO world. I, I, I started thinking, you know, even at a very early age, I, I remember this day very clearly. It was about 11 or 12 and I was at a restaurant with my dad and uh, looking out the window of the restaurant down this busy street and I'm seeing all of these uh, signage for, for, for build for all these businesses and thinking how some of them looked really tacky 
others, the signage looked very, you know, artsy and, and, and welcoming. And, and I, I think it was like a, a it might have even been like discount tire, uh, you know, just big black fonts. And I'm thinking, well, that's appropriate for, for a tire company. But then you look down the way and there's uh, a wedding wedding dress store that uses the same the same fonts and i'm thinking you know who would who would buy their wedding dress from a store that's using this discount tire font so i started thinking about the psychology behind purchases and, and i think that as the net evolved that same interest that i had and why people uh why cert, why uh why purchasing behaviors uh happen on a psychological level i think seo is really a great example of that how you can um, you're all SEOs. You, you understand this. I'm speaking to the sure. choir here. No, it makes it makes complete sense. I love I love the story too. I was yeah. like picturing you and your your father in like a diner or something. It, that's what it was. <laughs> looking out the window and 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 kind of thinking through that. And as a as a frankly and hopefully you'll take this the right way, a dorky little kid like yourself, because I was <laughs> like, what are we doing? Think of business models. I know. Like I know. <laughs> like yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna put my bar mitzvah money somewhere. No. Uh, so like, <laughs> like I, I I completely and utterly understand that sentiment. I guess did you carry that forward in your life? Like, did you decide you were gonna get into psychology in college or anything like that? Or what you what you study in that kind of led you in that? Direction? Great, great question. Uh, so I I. Uh, uh, my, so this is very, very funny. So my first year of college, uh, I, I was going into financial planning. And that was because this uh, uh, career day we had at school, there was this guy that came in who was a financial planner. And whenever anyone would raise their hand and, and, and answer a question, he'd give them a dollar until until our teacher's like, you can't give the students money. <laughs> but <I'm> like, <laughs> he was a financial planner, yeah, though. <laughs> yeah, he was just giving it away. And I thought, I want that's the job I want. I want to be able to just give money to, to teenagers. Like I've got it, you know, you know, a cornucopia in, in my wallet. And I, I didn't really know what a financial planner did. And uh, my, my friends were like, you know, I'm, what are you going to school for? I'm like, oh, you know, financial planning. Remember that guy that came to our school? I'm like, yeah, I guess. Uh, but Ryan, you like, you keep your tip money from the restaurant under your mattress. Who's going to trust you with their financial future? And I'm like, oh my God, you're right. You're right. So I, I kind of remembered that early, those early days, like what, what, it, what was I excited about as a kid? And in um, you know, another story, I, I used to go grocery shopping with my mom, you know, something we aren't really doing a lot of these days, but same psychology, like what, what, you're in an aisle at a grocery store and the choices you make are often based on the psychology of how those packages look. So I, 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 I thought a lot about those days as well. And when I changed my, my uh, curriculum at school, it was uh, into graphic design because nice. I started thinking about like those decisions that you make are uh, on a subconscious level. And a lot of that comes down to the, the, the packages we see, the signage we see. So, the first uh, eight years of my big boy job after college was at an advertising and marketing agency. So you can see how these skills kind blend. of evolve, blend. Yeah, 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 they blend, evolve. They, they, I wouldn't even call them evolve. It's like almost like a, it's you're adding different tools to the toolkit, right? Yeah, right. You know, and then you're able to do bigger and bigger jobs because you can kind of do that. That's, it was interesting because I was going to ask you like why corporate, the corporate marketing side, was that because search kind of helped you understand certain things that then empowered you to be on that team or was there a structuring thing or like what? Yeah, another great question. Uh, so I think that the work that I did, uh, you know, it took, you know, we're still, we're still fighting the good fight, but we're, we're still trying to get SEO adopted as a, as a, a standard practice. Like, like uh, it, it's taken five or six years of that. And, and the, the roadshow that I've done throughout the company, it's kind of like I'm, I'm the Johnny Appleseed of, of SEO. I go to market to market team and I'm, I'm telling them about, oh, this is what SEO can do for you. And I plant these seeds and then I, and then I peace out. Um, that's grown in time and enough, enough uh, decision makers at Amway are starting to see the value and importance, especially as we start shifting from this uh, distributor focus to a consumer customer focus. So how can we get customers to see us. And I think our leadership is understanding now that when you search for something like uh, glass cleaner, uh, we don't show up even though we, we sell it. And um, 
and and I, I think that they want to they want to do better in that space and and that's that is why we to, to answer your question that is why i evolved from the, from the digital side uh and graduated into the marketing communications group because our leadership determined well where does strategy begin strategy begins in marketing execution ends at the digital level so if we're starting with seo at the digital level only there's not enough of uh the Again, that thought, that little twelve-year-old boy looking at signage or or going to the grocery store, the, the, the psychology and the application of taking uh, thought patterns and and purchase decisions and putting that into the mix, that's not going to happen at that at the, the the last person holding that hot potato on the digital side. That's got to start from the 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 planners in marketing. Yeah, and why why do you think it's it's such a slow adoption, right? Because this is something that we, you know, Stefan and I have been doing for years together, Ad you know, like going from company to company, saying the same thing, fighting the good fight. Why? What do you think is the, you know, like what do you think is the, you know, like the holdback? Like why are people so, you know, like so like allergic to to SEO still to this day? Like you're you're talking about five or six years of doing this. Why so long? Well, a uh, cu- couple reasons I, I would say. I think one is that it's a techie sounding acronym <laughs> you know I, it's it, a lot of people don't even know seo stands for and then when they find and then when they hear what it stands for at search engine optimization that doesn't sound like something that nor a, a person that is uh, doing strategy and, and insights uh, is, is going to care about it sounds like something that someone in it does what so, hold on a second ryan SEO? I thought this was Stefan's employment opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> this whole show is a sham. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I, I get that. And, and what do you think, like, when you, to tack on to what you were just saying, when you're going and being that Johnny Appleseed, what were the, what are the seeds that you felt you planted that actually succeeded versus the ones you didn't? Did you find traits? Could yeah. You, could yeah. you read a room and be like, there's, I know I'm about to do an hour's worth of training but this guy shut down it's never going to happen or like like do you tell other people because i know i guarantee you people both watching now and people listening and watching later are literally spending 40 to 50 percent of their time training people oh yeah if you can give them like these are what makes a bad seo internal client or one who's not going to buy you're going to save them a lot of time right right i think um i think the to, to, I'll answer that question a couple ways. Like, so the, the first part is like, what, what do I do to kind of uh, bridge that gap? Uh, you you kind of have to come at it with uh, an olive branch right away because people are going to be hesitant when, when you tell them, Hey, I'm here to help you do this SEO stuff. And they're like, I have already, I can't even keep up with the workload I'm doing now. Now you want me to start measuring and, and, and thinking of keywords and all of this stuff. Well, you know, the only person that's really um, encouraging them to do that is me. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and that's the hard part when you don't have someone saying your job depends on listening to what Ryan's telling you. Um, they're, they're often not going to do it unless they can see uh, uh, how this benefits them. So mm-hmm. I, I always approach it like this isn't something extra you, you um, have to do. This is something that can help you prove to your upline or your manager that the work that you're doing is working. And, and if you can hit them on that level and talk to them about, you know, because this is something we're all, we all have difficulty doing, um, explaining the value we might bring, or, you know, you've got a one-on-one meeting with your boss and then you're scrambling, putting together all the work that you've been doing uh, the, the last two weeks. And you, you start asking yourself, have I just been busy or have I been productive? And I always spin it that way that this shows without a shadow of a doubt, you can show how you, the work you did had, had a definite measurable business impact and that you can prove that the content you wrote is reaching the audience you intended it to and not just crossing your fingers and, and using your intuition. That usually helps inspire the, the, the people that are like lower on the totem pole to, to want to do this because mm-hmm. it's something I think that uh, at least at our company, they, we struggle with when um, knowing what is the right content to make or uh, are we even reaching the audiences? Often we just, it's like a message in a bottle. We put content out there, we throw it out there and we just hope that, the, that someone finds the bottle 
uh, let alone the right person, just anyone. And, and, and this is showing them how they can be a little bit more strategic. So I think that's how I sell it downwards. But the past year, I realized that unless I'm, unless I'm really selling this to the, to the people who make decisions, uh, I'm going to be doing this for the next 15, 20 years and I'm not getting as, as far as I want to be. So this past year, I got an audience with our, uh, we call it GGC, Global Growth conference. It's the, the one big event a year where all of our executive leadership get together. And I was invited to speak to, to um, show them the, the value and importance of SEO. And putting it in really simple terms was uh, help them understand that what SEO is all about. And then the other, the other thing I was going to say was I stopped referring to it as SEO to, to most people. Uh, I call it uh, search-focused content performance because that's, oh, those are words people can understand. Like, oh, so you're measuring how well our content does when people are searching for it. Yes, it's, it's all about content. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's not, don't worry about the search engine. Don't yeah. worry about the word optimization. It's, it's about your content doing the job it's supposed to do. So that's an interesting idea because a lot of people think that SEO is like a four letter word, right? You know, when they hear it, they're just like, oh God, you know, I hear that takes a long time. I hear there's a lot that goes into it. That's a really interesting idea just to basically not say that and just give it another name, <laughs> but it's the same exact thing. That's, that's a good, I like that approach. Yeah. The SEOs are really content strategists today, completely. Yeah. And I love the tie to performance. Performance marketing, even Forrester changed their search wave. There's no more search wave. It's the performance wave, which of course, and, and SEO is included in it. It's not just about, you know, digital media, you know, paid media. Uh, but I love that. Some kind of twist on definitely content strategy, but having performance is what the senior guys want to hear about within the organization. Yeah. All right. I'm going to be contrarian now. No one's going to be surprised by that fact. <laughs> I, I agree. I know I'm breathing. Therefore I am. Um, so, <laughs> so I hear everything you're saying and I agree with all of you. The problem is an SEO by any other name. So I mean, why the hell do we keep changing the damn name of what the heck we do? <laughs> I want to talk about an identity crisis. We are, inbound we are web presence managers we are <laughs> seos we're search i'm guilty search presence intelligence we are uh oh organic. my god like organic organic marketers yep. i mean am i marketing organic vegetables like i don't I, it's <laughs> just we're doing too like this is an industry that is incredibly valuable but it is one that gets completely put in the corner the digital <laughs> corner the uh, where's my stapler, office space, basement, here you go, that's where you sit. Uh, because you know lines of code, you are our SEO originally, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So why are we allowing, uh, I understand that is, and I, I don't disagree with you, Ryan, I think you were making a great point, which if I was to sum it up, I'd say you're either adding value or wasting time. So if a person sees you as wasting time, then that's literally what they're getting out of this session and they're going, wow, Ryan's coming in to tell us why his job is important. Mm -hmm. Versus if you're adding value to them, then they're going like, oh shit, this can actually help me take care of one, three, seven, and eight on my to-do list. Therefore, it has value to me and I want to listen to what Ryan's saying. Right, right. So completely agree with you there. But I guess, and I'll throw it out to everybody really is, and if anyone wants to chime in, but Ryan, go ahead first. Are we creating an identity crisis in the ability to brand ourselves? Remember, we're still marketers. So mm -hmm. branding SEO within an organization, if we change the name, do we do ourselves harm? Yeah, I think you're, you're spot on. So I, I should clarify to you, it, you know, it's the old adage of calling a garbage man a sanitation engineer. Just call him a, gar just call him a garbage man. I, I, still, I still refer to like my title, you know, my title, my department, my initiative, it's SEO. But, okay. uh, but when, uh, when, I'm, when I'm speaking about it, trying to explain it, I, I rarely use the word SEO. I, I, Got it. Because, because uh, what I hope happens is you get through a half hour presentation and they're like, oh, I thought this was going to be about SEO. But he really just talked about uh, you know, making our content perform. And then you're like, exactly, exactly. It helps. It does help elevate, elevate that aspect of it. But I, I, I agree the, 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 the more we, you know, I remember the first time I heard uh, uh, the, the term, uh, uh, what was it, solutions architect, 
I'm like, why are you, why are you calling someone that people are going to hear the word architect and they're going to think that that's, that that's what you do, that you build buildings. Um, I, I agree. I think, I think the nuances of language, uh, and it really isn't that what we do. We right. Like yeah. This. Like we literally pick words for a living. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, I think, I think that reinventing ourselves is probably not the best. Uh, yeah, it's, it's weird when you think about it, it's like the word that we choose also, like, they're a mouthful. They're not accurate. And I agree. It's not like I'm saying search engine optim optimization. There's no even verb for that, like optimizer. Mm -hmm. That might, you know, so it, it doesn't really ring that true anymore. I think the problem is there's a diaspora of people that are trying to like rename and rebrand and refocus. And we've been guilty of it ourselves at Conductor. But um, in, in that right, we found this like, lack of ability to say oh yeah that's a x yeah. i need that in my company we've gone so far in doing this in terms of when you think of the age that i don't know how long everyone's been in this industry but we started with webmaster and digital and then that became like a bad word and you wouldn't use digital because wow. digital was like uh, that was like uh ones and twos <laughs> i know zeros and ones i should say it was very binary and now we're back to digital again like oh, yeah we've done a full revolution of like these words in the nomenclature. And it's interesting if we don't brand ourselves properly, I wonder if we get out correctly, but I do agree. I think, and this is a valid point where you're saying is in the framing of the conversation, see how many see, and this is maybe a challenge to everyone in your next SEO, we'll call it SEO in your next SEO training. Try not to say the word SEO. Mm -hmm. Like that, that, that would be like a very cool challenge yeah. to see can you do an hour training without saying the word I think SEO? That's, that's a fantastic yeah. idea. You know, and then, and that will work that person's need to like, okay, I said it once. I know I have three more of these. I got to find a way to get that one out of there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I bet you the first time they do it, they'll say it like seven times, even though they don't, don't mean to. Because yeah, give the person that give the person that actually raises their hand and says, you didn't say SEO one time, give them a prize. <laughs> <laughs> right for, for now. Catching. So, so going back to the other question, um, who does it not resonate with? Like, have you noticed a pattern, a trend, anything that in your, in mm. your, in your travels through an organization, you find like, Ooh, that tends to be a dead end. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not necessarily a specific type, but uh, it, 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 it's hard because you're, you're trying to slowly, uh, ingratiate these concepts that you know that if they got a chance to hear what you have to say, they would um, see that oh, this is exactly the work I'm doing. This this is uh, this is closer akin to what I'm doing than I than I thought. But um, they they've already got a little bit of a wall put up. And what I what I hear a lot sometimes is the. SEO will come up in conversation or, hey, make sure SEO is a consideration or SEO is at the table or we're doing the social plan or we're doing uh, this pr product launch. And, and then someone will say, oh, you know, we should also think of SEO. And then someone will say, someone will say, well, this isn't just about SEO. And, and, and I, I always try to understand what, what they're getting at when they say that. It's like, we're not dismissing it, but, but, um, it's almost like, like they're like we don't want to we don't want this to be about SEO because it's really about uh, it's about a go to market plan or it's mm -hmm. it's really about this social strategy or it's really about this this blog content and um, often often um, the authors of this content might have a different a differing opinion about who the audience is it, it it might be for our already captured market or it might be for our our ABOs our our um, our distributors. And, and when I try to, to say, well, it can be for those people, but it can also be for um, these new audiences that, that aren't even aware that we exist. And if we can try to kill two birds with one stone, it can still be for, it can still be a, for this purpose, but now we're, we're um, branching out and getting, getting new target audiences. So, so that's, that's usually the challenge that, that I see is, um, I don't want to use the word dismissive, but it's, mm -hmm. Uh, often I see that they don't want it to be an SEO uh, project. 
They yeah, it's, 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 you're, you're right. It's a flag. I mean, Pat, how many times have we been in a meeting? And you yeah, I, mean, I don't want this to just be about SEO. Who do you think that, can you even, Pat, think about this. I'm throwing this one to you. Do okay. you, do you, what are the groups in an org that you tend to hear that most from? I have two in my brain right now. Let's see if we have the same ones. I mean, for me, it's, it's content writers because mm-hmm. they don't want us to change their job, which is mm-hmm. understood. A lot of times we go in there, they think we're trying to change their day-to-day when we're really just trying to help them do it faster and more effectively. Uh, efficiently, excuse me, not effectively. And I would also say probably executives. Uh, Ooh, you, know, you like went a different direction I did. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> I would think like yeah, executives just because they come in and they hear slow and that usually is bummer to them. Like, well, they want returns fast. They want to be able to prove they, they need to know what the ROI of this is going to be pretty exactly, mm-hmm. which is a very difficult, uh, difficult position. But Stefan, what's the other group? I was going to, no, I was going to go for UX. For some oh, reason, yeah, for yeah, some reason, I feel yeah. like I always bump heads. Like, they're mm-hmm. like, yeah, but the UX, because as soon as you start dealing with someone, something that's higher level, in other words, if you're not dealing in a product page where they could give to, right? right. Um, like if you start getting up into the subcategory and the category level pages, then all of a sudden you're messing around with their baby. And it's like, do not do that. You start talking about maybe the right rail, not having certain things and how maybe we want some more filtration because the product types are proving with the search volume that there's actually desire for these products but they're not being positioned that way. And then, then it becomes just a, a, an exercise of, whoa, 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 you're stepping on my toes. We need to think about the user flow mm-hmm. and everything. And I'm like, but I'm bringing you demand. You're going to figure out how to take the demand and mold it. That's like your job. I'm just letting you know the demand is there and that mm-hmm. it's finding it's, it has this potential to find its way here. If we don't do something with that, then I don't know why I'm bringing people into the proverbial store and bringing them in front of this mannequin if you don't want to dress the mannequin in a way that is appealing, right? Like, sorry for the analogy, but that's, I have personally found that to be an issue, which is interesting because I start seeing this convergence between UX and SEO more as we're going forward. I'm starting to find those teams that used to never talk, Mm. starting to talk more and more because a lot of the tech issues of replatforming and migrations and whatever have become more prevalent that SEO is a part of it that I'll almost say, I think that's where we have finally got a seat at the table more frequently and how we've created a relationship with a UX team. Do you agree or disagree with that, Ryan? I, well, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I, I, I just stepped into a huge uh, project. Uh, one of our uh, one of our markets. So so Amway operates in many countries. We call those markets. So uh, one Amway market is piloting uh, an overhaul to their uh, their CMS, their content management system. And the big re- realization is two years ago when they when they had overhauled it, it had uh, an IBO uh, independent business owner focus instead of a customer focus. So now they're doing this big UI UX to bring in new customers. So when we realized that the digital teams were working on this without corporate marketing's uh, guidance, I volunteered to step in, not just on SEO's behalf, but just to make sure that that strategy, customer strategy was involved. So I I, I try to uh, play devil's advocate with them as well, um, appreciating that they are focused on what happens when the user is already on the site and working their way through. And I, I, I even admit the baton pass of SEO happens if we successfully get them to the landing page and then UI UX kind of takes over. And I think if you respect where that line is mm-hmm. uh, uh, and, and show them these are two sides of the same coin, these aren't conflicting right. uh, uh, methodologies. They're, they're, you know, we're, we're in a relay race together and, and one's the first leg and you're the second leg. I love that analogy. I think that's, yeah, that's a good one. one. I like that. We're going to use that for sure. Copyright, yeah. Ryan. Hope yeah, you got it. You got it. Yeah. With a link back. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but wait, so I, I really agree with you. I mean, I used to, I used to actually literally say to folks, um, I'm an SEO. I don't dress mannequins. Like my job <laughs> isn't to get you to the actual, my job is to get you to the store and have you like go, Ooh, you know, like that's awesome. But then if they can't find the cash register, the problem is I then quickly learned that you don't get much ROI when they can't find the cash register. So if they haven't made their way to the end, um, it's kind of still in your boat, right? It doesn't matter if you drove a thousand in there. If no one's buying because they can't find their way through it, that's a problem. 
Uh, do you, it, 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 shifting gears a little bit, um, you have dealt a lot with reputation management, and that mm-hmm. is something that not everyone in this space has. Um, and it's kind of interesting because reputation management overlaps with SEO a lot. Yeah. I don't feel like SEO overlaps with reputation management a lot. Right. I mean, they kind of, you know, they kind of have this like symbiotic relationship. No, they definitely, they definitely do. I'm not saying they don't. I'm saying like, I find more people who are doing reputation management think about SEO than SEOs think about reputation management. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Pat, you look like you don't agree with that. No, I agree. I, I'm not saying I don't agree with it. It's just, it's a, it's, it took an eye roll to get you to agree with it. So I don't know if that, did everyone catch that in the camera? It's, it's just like, you know, it's the same, it, a lot of it's the same set of tasks. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, you know, just that, that's what it comes out to. It's a lot of the same set of tasks. That's no, what. I agree that the tasks are the same. I'm saying that like, I don't think the individuals are, I think more people, I don't think you can do reputation management without thinking about SEO. I think you do SEO without thinking of reputation. That's, that's what oh, I thought you meant. That's oh, absolutely. I mean. Yes. Okay. I missed that. No, yeah, right? yeah, so that's kind of, sorry, yeah, I didn't like, frame it correctly, but yeah, that's yeah, kind of that where was, I'm at. Yeah. But Ryan does both and not because he's doing one. He does both because he literally does both. Right. And he's found ways to intersect them in very interesting ways that I don't know how much you want to share or don't want to share, Ryan, but like really interesting ways that like I think of him, you know, kind of like this when it comes to that. Oh, thanks. That's um, better. <laughs> you know, you, I believe the French say, you know your shit. So give us a little sense of, uh, give us a little sense of, of, of how you've, overlap those two things and then um sure. and why you have a passion for both yeah sure um so um uh, i uh i'm very very candid i've i've lived in uh the i've lived in michigan my my whole life so i i've uh and amway's seated here in, in um in, in michigan in the greater grand rapids area uh i i remember my first instance with amway i was waiting tables at the time and uh you know, this, uh, this cool guy that I liked that, um, you know, he was like always throwing parties and, uh, all, all the other people that worked there got to go to these parties and I was younger. So I, he never, never invited me to these parties. And one day I got invited. I'm like, awesome. Well, I found out, I found out that his parties were, were actually Amway parties. And, and I, I showed up to this thing thinking that like, I'm going to meet new friends and stuff. And, and it, really to, to sell me products and it was very confusing for me because I didn't understand what was happening until about you know 45 minutes into it and that was my first kind of uh, taste of Amway and and uh, so people who live in in the West Michigan area like we just have this idea of what Amway, Amway is I think you know different parts of the world have similar people have similar stories um, when I decided to come to, to Amway um, I had to kind of resolve that and think about, well, um, how can I help them overcome uh, the stigma that, that, that attached to them? And, you know, the first thing I did before I started working there was I, I Googled Amway. And I think that's what a lot of people do, either if they're about to be employed there, uh, buy products, or uh, learn more about this exciting business opportunity that, that someone told them about a meeting for coffee. So um, I, I immediately knew that I could I could help this company at least with the the search parts of it. I can't you know the parts that are out of my control what happens offline, but at least for the searching I, I knew I could help. Um, you know we we have uh, we have problems uh, in, in our company from perception problems that I don't, that I think are unique to us. I, I think a lot of companies have reputational issues, but uh, one thing I noticed was search volume, uh, search volume for uh, negative terms about Amway are much different than search, than the search volume for negative terms about companies like Nestle or, or Nike, um, you know, and, and Nike, is probably the one of the greatest brands on the planet, but we tend to forgive them for the parts that are uh, right. that that we, you know, we we uh, don't even need to be be said. But we we for, so so if if a brand like Nike can overcome um, some of these negative the negative perceptions and still be a great brand, how can how can we use search uh, use search to to show people uh, the 
the benefits of our brand, and also how do I get how do I get that search uh, brand or that share voice or, or market share down so more people are searching in a neutral way or a positive way than a negative way. Um, it was a challenge. You know, I I had come from I had come from a uh, a role where SEO was about conversion. And from day one, I was told, we don't care about conversion. Our, our distributors convert for us. We just need SEO to be this magic bullet. And, and I had leaders say, we just need you to push down the negative. And um, you know, the analogy that I always would give, it, it, it's like if you tell your kids to go clean their messy room and 10 minutes later they say they're done, Mom's mom's gonna poke in the, the archway of the door and see this seemingly clean room, but mom's savvy. She knows she knows her kids. She knows to look under the bed. She knows open to the open closet. the closet door and everything spills out. So so our our detractors are savvy. They if you just push uh, if you search the word Amway and page one is clean, they're just gonna search, well, is Amway legit? Or is Amway a scam? Is Amway a pyramid scheme? Is Amway a cult? Uh, and, and what they find, that's like opening the, the closet door. So it's not just about keeping page one that, you know, that's another thing that our, our, our uh, we hear a lot at, at Amway, the personnel will say, how's our page one? And I have to explain that there are millions of page ones. How are we at, <laughs> how are we at, um, Amway, uh, you know, apples, we're, we're, we're not on page one. Amway cherries, not on page one. Amway scam, yeah, we're on page one. So <laughs> choose, choose your combination of, of, of long tail words surrounding Amway, and that, that number of changes. Uh, so, so that's really that's really, and I had to I had to really think creatively about this because um, I'd never done SEO for reputation purposes before coming here, and um, it doesn't seem like a lot of other uh, businesses have used SEO for reputation as well. So we had to kind of invent our standard for measurement of, of online reputation. And uh, that's when we came up with the, the idea of measuring search sentiment and listings. So, so um, how are people searching and what do they see when they do search? And isolating and um, sorting the, the top 50 uh, branded terms. So, 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 and, and I'm always asked why, why does it, why is it branded? And I answer, well, if people are searching for worst multi-purpose cleanser and Amway is not attached to that, that's a, it's a benefit for us. But if someone's searching Amway multi-purpose cleanser and they get negative articles, then that's a problem. So, so we, we really isolated how people are searching in a negative way and what do they see and, and how much of the market share any one given um, detractor might have for the, the entire bucket of branded keywords. And we see that a lot with like crack.com. That article has just kind of lingered for a long time because getting a lot of likes, a lot of shares, um, it's a concentrated article. It's like a three-page article. So they're hitting you with, you know, they're hitting you with domain page authority for three, three pages. It's funny. You know, it's, I, we, we even, we even, we, it's, it's hard to dispute some of the jokes in it that's, it's based in. And, and that's when it really gets critical for us is when it's not just some, um, some nutty person that's got a chip on their shoulder. Sometimes when the articles are based in logic and, and, um, they're easier to, to, to swallow. Those are more dangerous for us because mm -hmm. uh, people, people will read those and say, well, this person seems reasonable. Yeah. Uh, this criticism is reasonable. So this might be, there might be truth to this. Um, the, the reality is we just have, have not done a great job of putting ourselves in a position where trust and credibility is there because you know, a lot, a lot of times people will have a bad experience with Amway and, and the, the, the next thing they'll say is, yeah, you never even see them anywhere. You don't see ads, you don't see them in billboards. Mm -hmm. uh, are they even a real company? I only hear about them when, when someone is trying to get me into their, into their organization. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's really the, the focus we're trying to do now. And 
I, I actually have some slides that I prepared that um, if you want to see them. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, yeah, let's let's go ahead and share. Uh, by great. the way, guys, while while um, Ryan is pulling up these slides, I got to tell you, this is hands down, like everyone argues, and go ahead and share the slides, Ryan. Sure. But um, uh, hands down, people constantly fight me on tracking branded terms. Mm. You have mm -hmm. got to track your branded terms, not oh, yeah. just the negative ones. You should also be looking at the positive ones. You should also be adding the word reviews and all sorts of other oh, yeah. terms to it. I don't care if you think you're going to own position one, you should own position one. But okay. last I checked, there are at least, at least, and especially in a universal, constantly evolving world of, of universal elements and, and knowledge graph, there are con there is at least nine other spots that are going <laughs> right. to come up, right? right. right. So you, are, you may or may not own all of those. And if you don't understand, A, what's showing up, then B, to Ryan's point, what the actual sentiment of those things are, you're leaving yourself very open. I think yeah. one thing is you get into this, Ryan, did you, did you, um, did you actually influence and teach the executives things they didn't know on how to change or were they always asking you to just change the results? Uh, it, it, it started that way. So, so that, that's, so when, like I said, when they said they were originally, they just wanted to push down that negative. Um, my early, my early days, I was maybe too, uh, too shy to push back on that. But it, in over the years, I explained to them that it's not just about uh, a defensive approach, but there's a there's an offensive approach as, as well. So when it comes to credibility, building credibility, it's not just about defending your negative reputation, but um, building up your positive content so that it the negative stuff doesn't matter as much. And uh, brand awareness, so product, so, so, so uh, positive listings is one half, product discovery is the other because people trust brands that they see. If I search, if I search best multivitamin and Amway Neutralite shows up every time, it doesn't really matter if someone calls us a scam. I see this brand everywhere. They're the number one vitamin right. in the world. So, I, you know, poo poo on, on that, um, calling them a scam. The problem is when we have both of those uh, issues happening when we don't have that visibility and we have this uh, these negative detractors that's where it kind of gets dangerous for us but but yes you're right it took it took a long time you know one of the big things that I had to really help them change was the the fighting fire with fire approach so um, we've had this uh, monkey see no evil monkey speak no evil monkey hear no evil approach to to, to negative content because why would we want to bring attention to, why would we want to make content that talks about us being a pyramid scheme? We don't want to, we don't want to see that at all. Um, and it's like hiding, hiding, hiding from the ghosts underneath your sheets. Like the ghosts are still, <laughs> the ghosts are still technically there just because you can't see, <laughs> they can see you. So, you know, the idea here is we have to fight fire with fire. So it had to, we had to convince like legal and we had to convince higher ups that why creating an article that, that is, uh, titled uh, is Amway a pyramid scheme and then answering it with our own voice and getting on page one and, and at least being in the race with those other nine listings why that is uh, a benefit for us and the first time in Amway history just in the last couple of years with our our Amway answers FAQ uh, site we we're able to tackle these commonly search questions and provide answers and we're on page one for for a lot of these that's awesome topics go ahead go ahead i don't want to i don't want to oh, i don't want to no. keep you so but this no, is this, this is great this, this is great. exactly what the heart of what uh, i i'm like extremely passionate about what you've done here because i think thank you. you've you've been able to to bring some stuff together that other other search marketers yeah. are not doing well it's taken a village um i mean it's been a lot of uh, me advocating but a lot of people who have uh kind of seen this seen the benefits and and uh agreed with the, the strategies have helped us make it happen so that's that's my favorite part of the, the job is when you see people that didn't really even know what seo was all about are now thinking about it and, and ensuring that it's happening so um so can you guys see my screen yeah we can oh, okay, yes, we cool. can. so i'll go pretty quickly here it's really i just wanted you know not not knowing uh this was just kind of the format i was thinking we talked about today is uh, big covid COVID related and searching from home. So um, 
one thing that you know we talked a little bit about you know the kind of the history of Amway and what we're all about. But our 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 mantra is uh, helping people live better, healthier lives. That's uh, we've got a a, a three part uh, strategy with our with our products: healthy nutrition, healthy beauty, and healthy home. And a lot of the products we create are intended to kind of pitch that that story. You know, our healthy home. We have air purifiers water purifiers, we, um, uh, best of nature, best of science, our, our, our Nutrilite vitamins and supplements are intended to um, really help someone live, live, their, live their best life. We have uh, healthy cooking uh, products, our, our, our beauty products are um, uh, heading, heading in the direction of what we call healthy beauty. So not necessarily just makeup, but, uh, but uh, products that help New, like uh, bring nutrients into your skin, et cetera. So if you think about what we stood for prior to lockdown, but, but prior to COVID, um, these are all things that people who are now impacted by coronavirus are care about greatly. Sure. So, so the, the, the issue for us is that uh, it, it, how to be sensitive and how to bring more people, you know, we were struggling with awareness prior to COVID. Now that it's here, how do we, how do we position ourselves in a COVID world where it doesn't look like we're just reacting to COVID and coronavirus? So from day one, uh, in the United States at least, if you look back to March 11th and 12th, Amway was one of the first companies in Michigan, maybe even in the country, that uh, companies our size that made the call before there were any uh, shutdowns at the, at the governor's level. Uh, we decided for the safety of, of ourselves and our community, Amway closed doors and we decided to start working at home. I'm very proud to work for a company that took this seriously and was proactive before someone forced them to shut down, they saw the need immediately. And and um, you know, March 13th, 14th, 15th, uh, businesses at least in Michigan started following suit. If Amway's doing it, maybe we should take this seriously. Hmm. So it was it was definitely a, a signal of pride uh, for for an employee. Um, you know, since uh, March 12th and and uh, we, we've seen businesses try to really make themselves relevant in this COVID world. And, you know, I think we all started getting bombarded with, uh, <laughs> with <laughs> in our email boxes, all, all these companies that we've signed up to for their, for their, their uh, subscriptions, making sure that we are, they're think that they know that we're thinking of, they're thinking of us during this crisis. So, um, you know, we, we started thinking, how do we make sure that we can let the world at large know that we are here and the value we bring without coming off like, uh, you know, like, like You're capitalizing off of it. You don't want exactly, to capitalize exactly, off of it. exactly. Exactly. So, um, you know, this was an ad that I saw right away and, and I wondered, okay, is this a, is this a poorly timed, a poorly timed social, social ad that they forgot that this was running? Or was it genius? Because I stopped in my tracks when I saw that handshake and, and, read, and read, like, what, 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 what are they doing? That's, we're not supposed to be taking hands right now. So, so, you know, that made us start to think as well, do, do we, we need to look like we're intentional, that we, we don't want anyone questioning motives, we don't want to make any missteps. Um, you know, and, and I think that many brand, many well-known brands are doing cringeworthy things in this time. Like this is no, no one asked for, no one asked for a pandemic book club. No, um, it's just uh, too soon. Maybe. Yeah. So, so we started kind of putting together from the marketing and brand teams, we started putting together uh, best practices, what we're seeing out there, who's doing it right, who's doing it wrong. And, you know, this was an, ad and ad week that we really helped us uh, kind of step up and, and think this is what we are all about. You know, if you look at this word cloud, you see things like cleaning, mm -hmm. and health and 
safety and safety, okay. uh, um, sanitation. And, and these are, these are things that, that we are impassioned with. Now there's the sensitivity here too. Like we have to be extremely careful more so than TurboTax does. TurboTax can write a blog that says 12, 12 immune system boosting tips uh, without any recourse of um, you know, no one's claiming that TurboTax is going to cure uh, coronavirus, but because we sell health and wellness products, we have to tread very lightly uh, on, on this. So how do we show the world that we're here, that we provide cleaning products, but without making claims that our cleaning products uh, kill coronavirus, um, why you should still care about the air quality of your house and, and water purity and how do we um, ingratiate ourselves into the conversation without looking opportunistic? Yep. So we, we started seeing what other news outlets were saying, like um, Mary Kay and uh, Manat being called uh, predatory for their distributors uh, to kind of taking advantage. Now, it's hard for us because we've always been a company that has given people an opportunity to... Uh, rise above their situation and giving them an opportunity for income uh, in for tough times. Now more than ever, Amway is a relevant company, but we've always been here, but it looks like we're just creeping out of the woodwork uh, mm -hmm. if we try to, to be too aggressive with this now. And that's, that's the space we're living in now, how we can help our, our distributors and our potential customers right now without seeming like we are um, trying to capitalize off of uh, grief. So, um, you know, and again, I mentioned Nike before. Nike seems to be doing it right. We want to position ourselves like companies like Nike that seem to be approaching this from uh, an altruistic way and um, a, a caring, a caring way. And and we're not trying to manipulate this either. We're not trying to dissect what the big brands are doing. We we just want to do the right thing. We want to do what uh, other respected brands are doing and not fall prey to um, fear, uh, it, as many co companies are afraid of losing uh, potential revenue. So, so um, we, we recognize that to get through this, we have to be more altruistic. So, um, you know, we've been monitoring blogs like this, like how, how we can um, support consumers wellness during isolation. And we felt that, you know, nutrition and health and general wellness, the type of content we're already creating is, is the best vehicle for that. Um, now, that isn't to say that we haven't had some missteps. So we, you know, the hand doesn't always know what the foot's doing it anyway, we're a global company. This was an ad that uh, the Malaysia team put out on their social channels right away. And it's a little bit of a stretch. <laughs> like, well, yeah, social distancing, we all agree social distancing is the right thing to do. I don't know how our all protein powder comes into play there. And just this ad seemed a little uh, disingenuous. So we're trying to help our market teams really navigate what's, what's appropriate, what's, what's maybe not so appropriate. Um, so going into what more things that we're proud of and ways that we can show the world that we're here to help. Um, one of the first things that Amway did was uh, Project Lightspeed, which uh, we changed in a 24 hour period. We changed one of our, uh, our plants that was making uh, shampoo and we outfitted, uh, we had enough raw chemicals on, on hand to answer the problem of uh, hand sanitizer shortage in West Michigan. So Project Lightspeed, almost in 48 hours, produced uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of uh, dispenser bottles of uh, hand sanitizer to be given to, um, we call it the medical mile here in Grand Rapids, uh, Spectrum, Spectrum Health. So uh, Grand Rapids is a mecca for, for uh, hospitals and, and, and the health industry, and they're very much shortaged on, on uh, sanitation materials. So we donated to them and to Kids Food Basket, which is a, a organization that um, packs packs meals for uh, uh, kids kids that don't have have meals. So we've been doing a lot of that type of work. Our governor in Michigan made a statement on the work that Amway's doing for our community, and and um, it's just really nice recognition. So 
the content that we're creating now, you can see that we've got a lot of corporate social responsibility content that's highlighting the, the, the good things that we're doing. But also, you know, from a consumer level, we are making sure that the content that we're building around healthy home, healthy nutrition, and healthy beauty has a, a, a relevancy to what people are searching right now. So I wanted, I wanted to share two examples and um, how we still have some work to do. I think you'll all appreciate this. So let's start with this article here, seven little known ways to support your immune system. So again, you know, zooming in here on the shop, we, we show a product that does have immune system benefits, our, da our, daily, our daily multivitamin, but we're not making any overt claims about COVID or coronavirus or how our products can block coronavirus. We, we have to be very, very critical because the, the FTC's eyes are on us, the media's eyes are on us. Uh, it's very important that, that we uh, stay respectful. Um, now I want to zoom in here on, on this title. So we had, I gave SEO uh, options to the contact team and what we had looked at in, in Conductor was definitely, I mean you see this huge spike in search inches for boosting immune system in February of 2020. Hmm, I wonder what happened in February 2020 that would make <laughs> people interested in boosting their immune system. Um, but unfortunately, the, our legal department didn't like this term boost immune system because it was too close to like, oh, are, are, they, are we claiming that our products boost immune system? Mm -hmm. So what they had suggested and what we landed with was, how about we just say ways to support your immune system? Well, that decision was made after I'd already given my recommendations. So the article went live and now I look back and, and I, I have to, now I have to have a hard conversation with the team that, um, although support immune system also had a little bit of a boost in, in February, it went down from like virtually nothing to now search 480 times in England. So when you look at all these other opportunities for, for better uh, search phrases for our title, um, how to boost your immune system still, I think, is that sweet spot. It's mm -hmm. low, low competition, fairly good search volume, but um, support immune system, really not going to do us any, um, and it, going back to what I was saying about it, you know, when folks say, well, this doesn't just have to be about SEO. Well, in this case, it does, because this is content that we're creating for the express purpose of bringing in uh, people that aren't aware of us, you know, people who are searching for a problem, they want to know how to boost their immune system. We want to have thought leadership uh, behind that. If we are truly uh, a company whose mantra is helping people live better, healthier lives, we should be in the first and foremost for a search like that. So this is going to be a hard conversation. I have to go back to help them maybe uh, meet in the middle and try to find a, a, a search term that we can re-optimize that title. Similarly, uh, this was an article that was kind of slipped through the cracks. I didn't give any input on this one. And I saw that this was posted just this last week. Five tips for working from home with kids. Super relevant or, you know, many, many parents are stuck at home with kids right now. Again, the photo is perfect. We uh, have a, 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 this is a kit for our Neutralite Kids uh, content. So, but it's nothing overt in here. Uh, but also, if you look at the search trends for, for this, obviously, uh, working from home with kids did boost up in February, but it went from, you know, zero to around 100. So if you look at working home with baby, working home with kids, we're talking about under, you know, under 1,000 search volume. So we probably could have looked at that closer and found a real diamond in the rough for uh, an article about working home with kids. So, um, you know, two opportunities that I have to, to really go back and help, help the teams um, re-optimize so that we're, we're hitting those new audiences. Um, any questions on any of that? I, anything I just shared? No, I think it's super. I mean, I love, yeah, the, fact that, I love the fact that you didn't come in here and say, a lot of people come, I mean, I'm glad you brought uh, slides and everything because I think it really helped embody uh, what you've been doing. But I, I also love the concept of, you know, you didn't come in here and say, oh, we've got it all together. Here it is. And look how no. great <laughs> the results are. You actually, 
it's kind of reverse navel gazing, right? You didn't, you said, Hey, we could stand to lose something. We could stand to do something better. We could. And that's the kind of thing that I think, you know, I've been thinking a lot about that. You know, we learn from our, our quote unquote failures. I'm not calling any of this a failure by any means, because I think a lot of this can just happen and you, you refine it. Right. But from that, we learn what's interesting is when you can learn from someone else without making the, uh, the slip up, and you can now keep that in the in the back of your mind. Right. So everyone watching this now can think about your stories, and you've storified them marvelously. Thank um, you. That allows people to think back to, oh, I remember when I was in Search From Home, and I was listening to Ryan show the issue they were having from a PR perspective and how they were doing all this great initiative stuff on one end, but then weren't necessarily fulfilling it on the other because of small things that they didn't look at that they should have. Am I doing Mm -hmm. that correctly when I'm thinking through it? I I love it. I think it's great. Thank you. I think in their fairness too, we are trying to move very nimbly too Mm -hmm. because you know, time is of the essence. There's so much content out there right now and we don't want to uh, chase the trends we we you know in a perfect world we would have already had that content present sure uh but but uh, in in their defense they're just trying to get this content out as quickly move as quickly as possible and i i don't want to slow down the boat i just want to make sure that the content's doing the job that that we set out to do absolutely uh, but but you're right i think i think that's my hope is that when things go back to some semblance of normal that that we can still continue these same um types of initiatives and looking at the way people are, are behaving and searching online to make strategic decisions. Yep. Another key point I'd say to everybody, yep. if you're going through these examples, right? COVID is a vacuum. I've said this before. It is a vacuum in time. You will never have another experience, hopefully, in our lives that looks like this. Therefore, you can do some testing, you can do some watching, but if you aren't writing down what's actually happening, and actually putting that, it doesn't have to be a beautiful case study, okay, but like, just put the notes down somewhere so you can build this deck later, uh, in case you're too busy, because you're going to want to take this deck, and you're either going to a conference, when conference is back on, and you're going to speak about it, and it's going to give you all the cred to go on a stage and tell a really interesting story, you're going to get on a webcast, just like Ryan did, and and share your information, Mm -hmm. or even more importantly, because those two were a little more self-aggrandizing for the individual, not to say you are, I'm just saying it helps our own personal brand, but think about what it means for your career. You're going to go back in there and a shared experience that every executive just went through and can actually relate to, as opposed to those words we were talking about SEO, those three letters that people don't understand. (laughs) Everyone can relate to. Remember we were all at, at home in COVID and remember when we did that business initiative and remember now the story is something they've lived through. So you can really connect with them and bring this back. But if you didn't write the story down and you didn't collect the data at the time it was happening, you're going to be like, I don't have the time to go back because now I have all this new shit to do. So right. just keep that in mind because I think what Ryan's done here is a great example of it. Case study, it, the good, bad, and the ugly. Um, and, and have that stuff in your back pocket. It's going to be useful for you in your career. And I think it's going to be great for you um, professionally and personally. So um, Ryan, I know we're up on time. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. It oh, has thank been you. enlightening as every one of my conversations with you always are, um, more, from you, more from you than from me. Uh, I appreciate all of you guys tuning in today. Tomorrow is Friday, so it will be the last day of the week, but we're doing this all over next week. Um, <laughs> one, one thing, if you have people you want on the show or you think should be on the show, reach out to me, stefanatconductor.com. I'm probably going to hate having put my email out there for everyone, <laughs> but whatever yeah, I have. Um, Feel free to reach out to me. Let me know some folks you'd like to see on the show next week and the weeks after as well. Uh, tomorrow we'll have Christy Olson, the uh, chief evangelist or head evangelist for Microsoft uh, chatting with us about some of the findings in Bing. So that's going to be really interesting. I hope you tune in. Thank you all for joining us as always stay home, stay safe, stay sane, <laughs> and, uh, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank have you so much. Bye, Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.